Good afternoon, and welcome to another disgusting episode of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. Now here's your divisive and derogatory host, Voice of Doom! Hello. All right, I figured I'd do a quick diatribe. It's June 1st, and uh, we seem to have made it through May without being destroyed, so let's go on and keep slouching toward Gamora. Um, my subject today was division, divide and conquer. It's an age-old <coughs> uh, strategy of warfare. Very easy to conquer a opponent who is divided, who is at odds with themselves. So how have we divided? Well, we could fill up the internet with examples of division. Division internationally, division nationally, division within families, within neighborhoods, division everywhere. Okay. Well, let's just take one subject that's been cropping up over and over again, this transgender business. It's all over the place. Now, the one thing most people should realize is that most activists are useful idiots, and they are pawns, and they should not allow themselves to be pawns. People in the LGBTQ whatever movement should not be used as pawns for a much more nefarious and and uh, <clears throat> widespread plot a strategy of dividing everyone now there was a big brouhaha years ago about same-sex marriage and I think it was of their own making because most people I don't think care the only um, people that seemed to care about same-sex marriage was were people that were of re religious persuasion that said marriage is a holy union by God and God did not mean for same sexes to be married because he created people to procreate and you need to be, you need to take two to tango to do that and it takes two biological people to be to tango to do that in a natural biological way that's obvious you can say what you want but the objective truth is that's what it takes now I won't go into the weeds about that <clears throat> division okay most people didn't really care if two men married or two women married they want to be together and they want it under some sort of a legal umbrella that's fine already had it in the first place it had civil procedures and civil unions that would say if I die this is my heir this is the person who I designate to be you know take all my stuff all right but it had to be marriage it had to be marriage in a religious setting and that's a whole different kind of division now it's not good enough that people could just accept gay marriage it's not good enough so they had to push it and there's been transgender people for throughout history and there's more and more now because as the internet developed in fact from the inception of the internet Transgender people found it to be a safe place for them to come out and be themselves. And there's millions of transgender websites, millions. And you realize that, you realize that back in 1996, 92, when the internet was just getting started. Um, so how do you divide people more? Well, you have to push the envelope and by pushing that envelope you sexualize children but and say that children as early as two should be concerned with 
their sexual proclivities. The earlier they're aware of it, the earlier they can deal with it. Now that opens up all kinds of cans of worms for obvious reasons. But I, I will say I saw a little snippet of something where a rather vociferous preacher stood up in a meeting of uh, parents bringing their toddlers to see a drag queen which was I don't understand that when I had when we had toddlers or kids below the age of five we didn't take them anywhere because we didn't see the point they weren't gonna absorb what they were seeing they're just being pushed around in a stroller and we weren't the type of people, well, we want to go out to eat, so we'll take our six-month-old baby with us because we want to be out and eat, and if the baby cries, oh well. No, we just stayed home. And that was our philosophy. But people seem to think it's a fitting thing to take their toddlers to see dry queens who aren't even discussing the philosophy of transgenderism or why they're just camping it up in front of toddlers. Now this preacher gets up and starts quoting the Bible and yelling and screaming about for God so said this and Deuteronomy said that and then they took their kids out. When the kid, the guy started preaching they took their kids out because they didn't want their toddlers to hear such things, such divisiveness. So you push it, and then instead of stores saying we'll cater to a certain um, segment of society, which is all well and good, by including certain things in their shelves, which could be mixed in with everything else, no, you want to create a whole section for this movement for um, transgenderism for little kids. So that boys who think they're girls can buy girls swimsuits and have a place to put their little thing, which isn't that big, um, somewhere so it won't be seen. Now, on its face, prima facie, that just doesn't seem right. You are conflating a child's identity with their sexual needs and it's just not right and I don't need to go into detail about that we know it's wrong and more and more I've seen obvious males that haven't made much of an attempt to change the their image other than maybe take hormones for like six months to a year in order to win at a lot of um, female sports or female divisions of sports so they're winning bicycle races they're winning track meets they're winning swimming meets and it's all over the place and I mean I've seen a few of them that okay you actually look like you could be a girl maybe you've been on hormones for quite a while and maybe you well, I don't know what you've done if you're over the age of two then maybe you've had full surgery but most of the ones I've seen on the podium are obvious males that have been on hormones for six months. And then they say, I'm a woman, and if you don't believe me, you're a phobe. And it creates more division. Now, what other division have we seen? I've belabored that enough. But one thing I think is really funny, not funny in a hilarious, humorous way, but strange, that a lot of these um, female to male transgender people are in their car crying because they've been misgendered and if you want to be a male then don't cry I'm not saying there are stereotypes for how you should act if you're a certain way well, don't tell me just because I'm a male that I can't cry well first of all you don't look male at all transgender people want to pass I know that for a fact they don't want to look halfway and be ambiguous. So if you're a female to male, then you better damn well grow a beard as soon as you can. And if you can't, then you get a fake mustache so you can look male. So that people go, 
Well, rather effeminate looking male, but that's a male. Okay. So you don't even try. You look and sound like a female with short hair. It's purple or green, which I did decades ago, 45 years ago. So I don't think you're all cool. Um, crying in their cars because they were misgendered. It's like, what are you supposed to, what am we supposed to do? You don't project as a male. So they better get on it. If they're going to be males, then be males. And, you know, do what males do or look how males look. You don't just get a short haircut and say, I was misgendered. It's sickening, getting sick of it. Okay, more division. Political division, even within their own, uh, you know, their own little tribes. Orangey is going after the Satanist, and the Satanist is going after Orangey, which creates division, which the opposition loves. They want every bit of that, and they want to see it happen. They want to see it get worse. And Orangey is not playing it well. I told him a long time ago, don't talk so much. Keep things close to the chest and don't turn on every single person that turn that, you know, says something bad about you. It's immature, it's childish. And I don't know what I'm going to do if there is an election in 24, which I don't see how there can be, but I will vote only so I don't have to hear the idiots tell me, oh, if you don't vote, you don't have any right to complain. Hate that. They're just implying that the vote means something and that we actually are voting for who we're voting for. Ignorant. But the goppers are going to tear themselves apart. And that'll be good for Petri dish. Because one thing about Petri Dish and his tribe is they tend to be unified. And when someone comes in to disrupt that unity, they do their best to get rid of it. Now, division is bad, isn't it? Even though cells divide in order to create life. But division is bad. But unification is bad too. Because how are we going to unify? Under what banner? Under what um, ages are we going to unify? We will unify under wokeism. We will unify under religion. We will unify under um, love for democracy, which means blowing up people that are going against us. Okay, unification isn't good. You talk about one world government, that has a nefarious uh, sound to it. Because we know how the world is, so if it's under one world government, well, first of all, it means that what used to be the United States, which is no longer a country, is uh, subordinate, or at least on an equal plane with other used to be countries. And we can't have that because we are the best and we are the noblest, and we have the best constitution, we have the best principles. So, no new world order, no world unification, unless it can be under the uh, jurisdiction of America, or what used to be. So, unification is bad, division is bad. Even religions are divisive. When I started practicing Buddhism, I had the realization that, yes, if everybody in the world chanted, we would have peace on earth. It stands to reason. Every person on earth has a common bond of revering the mystic law. So, of course, aside from your aberrations, there will always be a few snakes in the grass that sow division, even within, while they're trying to be part of the group, that if, okay, we do it with any religion. If every single person on this planet got down on their, on their knees every single day, and pray to Jesus, we would have peace on earth. It stands to reason. If every single person got down on their knees seven times a day and prayed to Allah, we would have peace on earth. Because everybody would be on the same page with their core beliefs. But even within religions, there will be division. 
Our organization was bent on achieving world peace through the spread of true Buddhism. Stands to reason. 2020 came along. And this self-same organization got right on board with becoming a hub for the dispensation of serums. They got right on board with banning uh, meetings for about three or four months. No meetings. And then once they did have meetings, they mandated that people wear masks at meetings. At first they mandated that you better have the serum or don't come to the meeting. Now that created division in the organization. And the organization which I believe so much in for many years as being the one hope for humankind divided themselves and the people that thought differently and said we're not going to follow the mandates of the government were ostracized and the organization became the very enemy that they were preaching about of the three powerful enemies they kowtow to the secular government edicts which they said would be a sign of being part of the three powerful enemies now I could go on and on about this and I'm gonna do part two on this division because I barely scratched the surface I can go on forever and people talk about how you know it's so hard to be a talk show host come on I can rant on like this for hours and I think it's better I've been watching other YouTube channels and other than don't walk run and maybe um uh full spectrum survival and maybe even liberal hive mind i think i'm the most entertaining i'm even i like myself better than liberal hive mind because i can watch myself for 16 minutes and i it, time goes by fast you i watch other things for 16 minutes it's like okay okay get on with it so i think i'm pretty entertaining and I think I deserve more props, but I might be being shadow banned because my channel is going nowhere. I have one fan who I appreciate. And uh, I'll leave it there. I think it was a pretty good one. And I will talk more about this maybe on the next one. So um, enjoy this fine, dreary, gloomy day, June 1st. Goodbye.